The Dark Knight has faced all manner of foes in his time as the bankable big screen hero, and with his arch nemesis now getting his very own movie, it's time to break down Batman's top 10 cinematic villains. One of the downfalls of most superhero movies that predate the MCU is that the villain often dies at the end. Killian Murphy's delightfully insane Dr. Jonathan Crane gets the distinction of appearing in all three of Nolan's movies, giving us the sense that Scarecrow was, and always will be, a thorn in Batman's side. While his time to shine is certainly Batman Begins with his fear toxin playing a pivotal role in the plot, we love Scarecrow's trajectory over the course of these three movies. Whatever you think of Suicide Squad, it's clear Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn is the standout. With Harley not originating in the comics, but on TV, her debut came in Batman the Animated Series episode Joker's Favor, a fresh take on the character is arguably harder. Yet Robbie managed to stay true to the Harley we know and make the character her own. And now that she's free of Leto's disappointing Mr. J for the Birds of Prey movie, here's hoping she gets even more time to shine. The pop art campiness of the Adam West Batman era was goofy and silly, and for many years it defined Batman for a huge audience. If comic readers ever held a grudge against the series, happily it's long since faded, and the stellar theatrical release stands tall as one of the great showings for Batman's rogues. Lee Merriweather's Catwoman, Frank Gorshin's Riddler, Burgess Meredith's Penguin, and Cesar Romero's Joker are all variations on the same kooky supervillain archetype, and yet their zany brand of technicolor debauchery still pops when we think of classic Batman bad guys. Including Joaquin Phoenix's Joker on this list is a bit tricky, since he doesn't actually encounter Batman, but he does briefly meet a young Bruce Wayne, and then there's that whole situation with Thomas Wayne. Still. This apparent origin story of the Joker, if it really even is the Joker, who can say for sure, is such a strong entry in the DC movie's pantheon, and Phoenix's turn as a disturbed Arthur Fleck is so memorable that we would be remiss not to include him. This is one of the scariest Jokers, no CGI or action scenes or explosions needed. He'd have ranked higher if only he had actually fought the Dark Knight. Maybe he still will. Where Batman forever floundered, the Dark Knight crushed it. Though Heath Ledger's Joker was the physical villain of the Dark Knight, it was Aaron Eckhart's Harvey Dent who was the emotional one. This is a Harvey with nuance who struggled to be a good man even before the chemical accident that scarred him. The choice to give him the Two-Face moniker before he becomes a supervillain is inspired and Eckhart plays the role with a darkness and sensitivity and constant conflict, all leading to an ending that completes Harvey's tragic story. Mark Hamill's otherworldly menace came into full force in the theatrically released animated film Mask of the Phantasm. Joker serves double duty in this movie, not only as Batman's usual foil, but also the primary villain in the titular Phantasm's life. Hamill is always great as the clown prince of crime, but the benefit of a theatrical release allowed him to take it a step further as he delights in the murder of more than a few folks, cackling all the way. Before she was intrepid reporter Lois Lane in Superman the Animated Series, Dana Delaney voiced one of the most memorable and affecting Batman villains ever on screen. Taking up the guise of death incarnate in order to exact revenge on the men who murdered her father, it's easy to see the compatibility between Bruce and Andrea. The pair were even engaged to be married before she abruptly called it off. It's this personal touch, and that Phantasm's methods are diametrically opposed to Batman's, making their reunion impossible, that make this story heartbreaking and the villain memorable. Catwoman has been a staple of the Batman mythos since Batman No. 1 released in 1940, but Michelle Pfeiffer's take on Selina Kyle was like nothing we'd ever seen in a blockbuster. The latex suit didn't feel like it was something she was wearing, but rather something that was always underneath the sheepish guise Selina had been wearing her whole life. While the semi-supernatural elements that Returns added to the Catwoman character is an odd choice, Pfeiffer's utter commitment to her ferocity makes the character sing despite the weirdness. Meow. Add in the playful back and forth between Batman and Catwoman and Bruce and Selina, and you've got one of the greatest interpretations of any Batman character on screen. For nearly 20 years, Jack Nicholson was a definitive Batman movie villain. His version of the Joker is a full-on cartoon in the best way possible. He revels in being insane. He thrives in it. After Jack Napier falls into that vat of acid, Nicholson plays a role like all the acid really did was peel away the man to unleash the violent clown that's always been living underneath. Just as the movie did on the whole, Nicholson's Joker let the non-comics reading public know that Batman's villains weren't just pop art spoofs of the bad guy, they were the real deal. 
When Joker was teased at the end of Batman Begins, we could not have begun to imagine what a tour de force his performance would be. Earning Heath Ledger a posthumous Academy Award, The Dark Knight's vision of the Joker is a fresh take on a character most assume could not possibly be surpassed on the big screen. What's brilliant about Ledger's take on the character is it completely upends the expectations coming off Nicholson's Joker. Where Nicholson is zany, Ledger is thoughtful. Where the former is cartoonishly insane and loving it, the latter makes you think he's more introspective than that. Sure, he's insane, but he doesn't necessarily want to be. Ledger's quietly menacing brilliance and ability to turn on a dime makes this incarnation of Joker not only the best cinematic Batman villain, but one of the best movie villains full stop. How do you rank the Batman movie villains? Where do you think Joaquin Phoenix's Joker will rank? Let us know in the comments and for more Joker, check out our review of the film as well as our discussion on why it looks crazy good. And as always, subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.